Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar to launch the new blogging app for School Jotter. My name is Tracy, I'm one of the trainers at Web Anywhere, and I'd like to take you through a short presentation and then demonstrate to you the new blogging app. At the end of that I'll put a slide up giving details of how you can contact us if you have any questions. So once again thank you very much for attending this webinar and we hope you find it interesting and useful. So as I mentioned earlier in this presentation, we'd like to introduce Blog Anywhere to you and give you some idea of why you'd want to blog in the classroom and a few helpful tips along the way. Blogging in the classroom has been proven to improve literacy skills in children. Children don't always perceive blogging as work, so enjoy doing this activity, reading each other's work and responding to it. When a child does a piece of work in a book, how many people actually see that? You know, but when it's a blog online, the audience is far greater. It also encourages online collaboration. The children will work together, um, support each other and really make the blog an informative and educational piece of work. It also inspires creativity especially when you can incorporate pictures and link into the blog links into the blog it really makes a blog post come alive and it's a way of expressing um thoughts and opinions in a safe environment the flip side of that is it allows for reflection. So when they're blogging about an activity that's happened in the classroom, in the demonstration you'll see we're going to create a blog about Victorian children working. And that allows them to reflect on things that in the past that may or may not have happened to them and how they made them feel and how they're going to work differently as a result. I think it engages all children blogging, every child from the noisy child that's always got something to say in the classroom, right down to the quiet children. They can all contribute in exactly the same way. And again, it's going back to that safe environment. And it has proven to work as part of the curriculum. And the 2014 curriculum does talk about blogging in literacy and in computing. So I was reading an article and the writer put forward the idea that it was no longer enough just to create writing in books. We needed to prepare our children for the 21st century and prepare them for the jobs that they will do when they leave school. And some of those jobs might not have been, even been created yet. And it's a really successful tool for you to use to encourage writing. They'll write the blogs, they're going to read each other's posts, offer comments, offer support. And it starts a conversation, making the blog interactive and they're engaging with like-minded people. So hopefully that should improve um, self-esteem and being less of a passive role of just being the reader, but rather the contributor as well. The audience is another thing to, to have a think about. Um, who's going to be looking at this blog? So using it to collaborate, to collect ideas, Sometimes we have ideas when we're not at school or somebody might write something on a blog and that'll inspire us to go a little bit further or to try something out. And many commentators on the internet have said that we are as able to be an author and a publisher as the television companies, as the publishing houses. And our information, our in stories, they can be read by a very, very large audience. And that's a brilliant um, motivator to encourage your children to want to write in a blog. I've talked about peer support as well, and I think that's really important. There's always initiatives in education. You can see there I've mentioned engaging boys. Boys have been underachieving and writing has been one area that's happened in. And when I worked with some boys on a blog, they really enjoyed that. They were blogging about computer games and things they find interesting. But the level of their writing did improve. 
and it's a brilliant way to record events. When I kept a classroom blog and we sat in the classroom in July looking back at the blog, it encouraged um, us to think about the good times and not so good times in class and how we overcame them. And then the children started to realise what they have achieved in that year. It's also a brilliant communication tool, whether you're using it with people just in school or you're taking it further afield and you publish your blog on your website. And then it's a way for parents to have an insight, if you like, onto what sort of things happen in your classroom. And that's great with the younger children who are not very good at retelling the day's events when they go home from school. Public blogs, really great for community cohesion as well. Um, and it's getting the community around the school involved. And sometimes you can't bring these people into school, but if they could read your blog and find out what you were doing, maybe you were doing a project within the community, and you can also tell them what you're doing and possibly get them involved. Planning your blog project, really important. You need to have control throughout the project. Um, and blogs, you can do that probably more so than a wiki, for example. The blog needs an objective. It's great that a blog can be spontaneous and it evolves and it might change direction as the blog is used and children take you on an adventure. When you use the internet, you might start off in one place, but by the time you've clicked on a few links and moved to a few different pages, you could be on a totally different topic and blogs can do that as well. You want the blog to be a meaningful exercise as well. So that's why keeping control and keeping on topic can be quite important. And it will build up into a comprehensive record as well. So that's really important. And you want the children to enjoy using the blog and take a pride in the blog and not have the attitude that oh, I've got to do this. So I'm just going to post whatever just so I've taken part. It's a great way of starting conversations as well. And I used to use blogs during the school holidays and that was a great way of keeping in touch, finding out what we were all doing. It is nice for a blog to have a theme. Um, you could have several blogs on the go at any one time and you don't want them to be blurred and become one large project. You need to keep them separate. So if each one has its own identity, its own objectives, the children understand this, that will work perfectly. I always made the very first post on a blog I created and I would explain what I expected. And it's just like a little reminder to the children when they start to look at the blog history that this is the starting point and this is what is going to be discussed in this blog. Blogs can be covered in ICT or soon to become computing lessons um, just to, so they get the idea of how a blog works, how the software is going to work. And then once you've done that, this blog will then become active in other areas of the curriculum. It's nice to have a look at blogs that other schools have created and find out what information they're posting. Sharing good practice, it never hurts. One thing I feel you do need to cover is about plagiarism and copyright. P copy and pasting off the internet is so simple now and it's wrong. And the, the earlier we can get this message across to our children, the better. The other aspect you can bring in here is e-safety. So not giving out personal information, names, details, so somebody could be identified you don't want to do that. And I also used to talk about my school's acceptable use policy. And I used to highlight the areas that I felt were relevant to blogging and to writing information online, adding photographs. Um, and if they're going to add a photograph, maybe a holiday picture, maybe they're not going to be in their swimsuit. Um, 
the winter blogs are great they can take a photograph of the snow or a snowman but if it's something about their holiday maybe encourage that it should be a landscape photograph rather than a family photograph Blog posts build up incredibly quickly and it can become a little bit tricky to find a post. So encourage your children to use tags or promote a blog so it can be found easily. And when we look at the software in a little minute, you'll see on the right hand side of every blog, there's tags, there's keywords, promoted blogs and archive. So it's very easy to search for a particular blog post or group together blog posts that have similar tags. If you're using the blog to improve literacy, I would sort of ask the children not to use the little emoji cons or to write in text language. We're looking for wow sentences here, um, good describing words, good action words to support any images or any links they may add to their blog post. It's really difficult to keep the momentum going sometimes and so somebody, an adult in the classroom, needs to post on a regular basis or maybe every now and again you sit down for the last 10 minutes in class and have the blog on the whiteboard and look at some of the recent posts. Not all of our children have access to the internet at home so this is a nice way to keep them included as well or have a blog champion for a week and then they can have a regularly check the blog posts and write comments and then report back to the class about what sort of posts have been put on the blog this week and maybe retell a, a funny blog post or something you think others might find interesting. It's about giving the children ownership. I'd just like to give you a few ideas of blog posts, of blogs you could create and that the children will enjoy posting to. So the class blog, that's the most obvious one. If you just put class blog into Google, you get some absolutely fabulous blogs and you get some blogs that have started off really well but petered out. If this is going on your school website, prospective parents, your current parents and the dreadful Ofsted inspector would be able to see it. And if it's old and out of date, it's not a good reflection of your school. But it's great. Children will post about things that happened in class that you might not have thought important or big, but it was special to them. Possibly ask parents if they could post comments sometimes. Again, it's just reaffirming to the children that this is being read by other people and it's going to motivate them. It's also another way of engaging with parents and keeping parents informed of what's happening in your classroom. A revision blog is a really good idea, um, especially this time of year we're coming up to SATs and the children can ask each other's questions, they can post links of revision websites they've found and you can put links on there as well. And you're also then you're making sure the correct support is offered um, rather than parents just going out and purchasing SATs revision guides and discs from um, stores. A holiday blog. Ofsted reported several years ago now that some VLEs were being used while school was closed in a very productive manner and keeping the school ethos alive and well. Oh, it was during bad weather days that this report came out. So have a holiday blog or a bad weather blog if you like and just keep in touch and that's a really nice idea. And earlier I talked about for photographs coming under e-safety so you need to reiterate to the children what photographs are nice and which ones we need to try and avoid but as a teacher you would be able to remove any such photographs and here's some information about having a snow day blog uh, I just put a, a post on my class blog thinking nothing would come of it and oh, I was so surprised so happy when all of a sudden lots of different um, shaped snowmen photographs started appearing and children were on sledges etc so it's a really nice way of just keeping in touch 
during these incidents. And you can use these photographs when you're doing some writing in school later on, possibly. Reception, early years, key stage one. Sometimes they have class mascots, a, a teddy or somebody that possibly goes home with the children. And when my children were in school, they brought home a Winnie the Pooh and he had a little camera with him and a book and we wrote in what he did and we could take photographs. So this is taking that idea one step further and maybe part of taking this mascot home would include writing a blog post and you might need to um, wise up the parents there so that they can support their child creating the blog post at home. If that wasn't available to you, you could work with a child on a one-to-one -one basis, maybe a TA could for 10 minutes, just to add a blog post. So keeping the project moving, we've talked about that really important, highlighting the blog to the children so they know this is something that's happening all the time or it's happening while you're doing a particular subject in school. And we talked about if you show it in class, you're making sure everybody has a look at it. Maybe if you have some computers, you could make them available, maybe in golden time or towards the end of a lesson for children to create a post who don't have that facility at home. Attracting readers to your blog is really important and it's a really difficult one as well. You know you're going to get the parents that audience is going to be there. And maybe if you have the web address for the blog on newsletters that go out or any other communications you send, that's another way of the immediate community being informed about the blog. But it's you want a bit more. You want a, maybe a nationwide or a whole community audience or even go for a global audience. And this is going to involve just a little bit more work for you. Social networking. Um, I used Twitter when I taught just to keep in touch with the teachers, find out what they were doing and quite often I saw my classes blog today, please can you go here and have a look. So if you have a Twitter or a Facebook account associated with your school, that might be something you could use to promote your blog. Also using hashtags when you're writing your blogs as well. Um, hashtags is a great way of grouping together information, like-minded information um, from like-minded people and then passing that on. Something I did with my children is we looked for local schools and their blogs. Um, I had spoken to teachers beforehand and I said if I do this and we make a comment would you return the favour and they said yes and then we would go a little bit further afield even try in another country and I think we um, made a comment on a school's blog in New Zealand and they were really kind and they replied as well and again that really encourages the children so when you post a comment make a constructive comment and then invite them to look at your blog and then give your URL. If somebody puts a comment on your blog, I think it's nice to reply, even if it's just, thank you for that, we really appreciate it. And But you can try to carry on the conversation so you are getting this to and fro conversation and you don't know where it'll lead. It's really interesting, really exciting. Some blogging projects have made national newspapers and have had a lot of attention so it might be something you could start but on a smaller scale maybe within your cluster um, or your your academy of schools where you start a blog blogging project and each person each classroom has responsibility of that blog for a short space of time and that's a great way of you know getting your blog out there working with other schools community ticks lots of boxes again for Mr Ofsted. So Blog Anywhere is a really good tool for teachers to use in school. The children can use it in school and also outside of school. Your pupils can create blogs as well as post on your blogs and I think that's really important that the pupils can create blogs. 
So while the teacher's creating the educational blogs, maybe the children might have a blog post about the football club they're in or about a hobby or maybe film club has a blog and the children can post on there or the school council it is nice to give children ownership and have the ability to comment on each other's blogs at all times wherever your children can type into anything in any web anywhere product it's moderated any foul language spelt correctly, incorrectly or with symbols will be automatically blocked and the administrator advised. The other feature we have on Blog Anywhere is if somebody was to read a blog post or a comment and they found it inappropriate or offensive, they can flag that to the administrator as well. And this app is now available. Um, you can have a free trial in the App Store if you have School Jotter. If you do want to have a free trial and you don't have School Jotter, then please get in touch with us. Blog Anywhere is being worked on all the time and improvements. We've gone out, we've spoken to teachers, we've asked them what they want. What do they find frustrating about other blogging products that they use? So we've got some improvements happening as we speak. So the blog will be able to be put in its entirety or just particular blog posts onto the school website. Again, this is motivation for your pupils. Maybe if you're not going to put every blog post, you put the top five blog posts for that week. And then the children will be really excited to look on the website on the Friday, for example, to see if their blog post is there. There's going to be a statistics area so you can see how many people are viewing your blogs. So if the numbers start off high then drop, maybe you need to promote your blog again and we talked about that earlier. There's also going to be a calendar widget so you can see how often and when your pupils are blogging. Is it in school time? Is it in the evening? Is it high during um, school closure times? And you can look for patterns and where it's particularly low or where you want to increase that, you can then do some work. So that's a really useful feature to see. Pupils can subscribe to other pupils' blogs, just like you can and I can when we use um, Google Apps, for example. So if I'm, I follow an educator's blog, I don't want to go and have to check it every day. So if I subscribe to it, when a blog post is added, I'll be notified about it. And what we're really excited about is, at the moment, a blog post is pure text, but we will be able to add pictures to the blog post. And sometimes a picture can really help to explain a piece of writing. So that's going to be really interesting to use. So here is more information of how you can get details of Blog Anywhere. We've got the Blog Anywhere .co.uk website or you can email us at info at webanywhere.co.uk and we've got our telephone number there for our head office in Keithley and that's 01535 604 026 and I'm going to put this slide up again at the end of the webinar just in case you didn't get any information there. So thank you very much and now I'd like to show you what Blog Anywhere looks like. So now I'd like to show you the Blog app. So the Blog app will be on the dashboard for your teachers and your students. And straight away I can see the blogs that I have created and that I'm working on with my children. On the left hand side there is a menu My Blogs. If I switch to All Blogs I will see all blogs that are currently occurring in my educational establishment and I can see who the owners of the blogs are. I can see where I can add a post. I must own these because I can edit and delete them. And the ones that I don't own I can simply add a post or add a comment to. So I'm going to open our Healthy Living blog and I've sort of set the 
children a challenge. So I've recorded on our Healthy Living blog, um, I want them to think about are they getting their five a day and record their comments. So the post tells off and I can click on read more. I can then scroll down and see the comments that have been posted. Because I own the blog, I can edit, delete any posts I don't wish to. Or if I didn't own the blog, I would still have the report button. So if I found something offensive in the comment, I could click on report and it would be highlighted to the administrator. So at the bottom, I have a link to go back to the blog. And I can look down the blog at previous posts. The most recent post is always at the top of the blog. Over on the right hand side, you can see the keywords. So straight away, if I clicked on exercise, I would see the posts where exercise was put as a keyword. Blogs are also archived. So this is in April, we're now in May. And then you can promote blogs. And by when you set a blog up post up and you click the promote button it will appear here so again it's another shortcut a quick way to find a particular post so that's how a blog looks like and how you would use it so i'd like to go through adding a blog so you can see how easy it is so i'm back at my blogs and i'm going to click on create blog I'm going to give my blog a title and a description. So I've given my children a description of what I'm after from this blog to get them thinking. And I'm just going to click on the save button. So I get a message telling me the blog has been successfully created. And there it is at the top and the last date it was modified. So if I click on the title, it will take me to the blog and you can see there's no posts at the moment. On the bar menu bar at the top, I can click Add Post. And here you can see the screen that you would enter if you were adding a post to your own blog or you were adding a post to another person's blog. So I've typed in the comment I wish to make, then I can add some keyword tags. So I just simply type them in. And then just put a comma straight after it. And then add. So here is where I could promote my blog so it would appear in the promoted section on the right hand side and be nice and easy to find. The date I was published and then I'm going to click on the publish button. So I've now added a post to my blog. At any time, I can edit and delete a post. Again, if I report a post, it will be sent to the highlighted to the administrator for them to have a look at. The administrator, as well as the person that owns the blog, can remove a post or a comment at any time. I'm going to log off as a teacher now, and I'm going to log on as one of my pupils. So again, on the dashboard, I'm going to select the blog app. So I can see that this pupil has one blog they've created of their own, but they're going to need to click on all blogs. And again, they've got all the blogs in the educational establishment, the most recent at the top. So they're going to click on the title of the blog and they can see my post. If they were to click on read more, if I'd done extensive writing, it would appear and they can add a comment. Once they've typed in their comment, they simply click add. The comment will appear straight away for everyone to see because the person added this comment, they can edit, delete or report again, but they can't edit my post and we can see now the keywords starting to build up. So I'm going to log out as the pupil and I'm going to log in as another pupil. 
and this pupil is going to add a post rather than a comment to the blog. So again, into the blog app, into all blogs, and they're going to add a post. So as a pupil then, I've added a post, and I just click on publish. So there I can see my post. So if I cross here, you have like a breadcrumb trail of the path you've taken. If I go back to the main blog page, I can see that the post from the pupil has been added to my post. And again, people can click on read more and add a comment if they so wish. So I'm going to log out as a pupil and log back in as myself. And go back into blog. I think it's really important if you're using a blog that the teacher or teaching assistant, an adult in the class definitely, adds to the blog post, comments on the children's post. That keeps it moving really nicely. So I'm going to add a comment to Kevin's post and then just click on add. So let me show you the reporting of a post because I know this worries a lot of teachers. The ability here, the children can post straight onto the blog straight away and it can be seen. So maybe if I was looking at this post and I didn't like it, I could click on the report post button. It just asked me to confirm, are you sure you want to report this now? And I'm going to click on the blue button. And I've got a message telling me that the post has been reported. I'm going to go back to the dashboard and log in as a ad to the admin app. On the left hand side menu, you've got an item called flagged content. And there's lots of different apps that flagging can be raised. So I'm going to select the blog app and I can then see the item. So I'm going to click on show contents. I'm going to have a look at it in full. I've got two actions I can take here. I can delete the post or I can unflag it. Uh, maybe I do think it is all right. Maybe the word bloody was used, but in a, a context of how you had a bloody head, that would be flagged through the bad words list. So I'm just going to click on unflag. Oh, sorry. So we're going to put a tick in there, actions, and unflag. So that post is now removed. I just want to show you the bad word list. It comes with lots of predefined words spelt correctly, incorrectly with symbols, letters, and you can add to the bad word list for your educational establishment. So let's go back to the blog. You can search at any time as well. We have a filtering system. So you can enter a title or a description. So I'm going to put in just the word healthy and filter. And it's going to bring to me all blogs that have the word healthy in the description, which is just one. If I was to move into my blog post, I can do a different type of search. Our developers are working on this all the time and eventually any po blogs and posts added here you can then add to your school website. So if you're deciding you're going to have a class blog, really great way of engaging with parents, letting people know outside of the classroom what's happening, the parents would be able to view the post that you deemed fit to go onto the website and like we said in the presentation, it encourages creative writing. Blogging is featured in the new curriculum that will start in 2014. It's more in literacy than computing though. So writing for different audiences, persuasive writing, that all comes into blogs. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, so I'm just going to leave you now with the last slide 
just showing you the um, contact information. So if you need to get in touch with us at any point, you've got any questions, please get in touch and we'll be only too pleased to answer. Thank you.